Earlier today, Inkscape released version 1.3, and with it comes lots of new tools and features, some of which we'll be going over in this video. Now, we won't be going over every single change that was made, but I'll put a link to the full release notes in the description of the video if you want to check that out. I'll also have a download link to where you can go to upgrade to the latest version. Before we get started though, I'd just like to take a moment to commend the Inkscape team on another job well done. I've been using Inkscape since 2009, and this is probably the most excited I've been for a new release. Seeing Inkscape's growth over the years has been really impressive. In fact, if you look back to 2015 when I first started making these videos, it doesn't even look like the same app anymore. So kudos to them and let's have a look under the hood. The first new addition we'll be having a look at is the Shape Builder tool. This is something that Illustrator has had for quite a while, and it was also introduced to Affinity Designer just last year. And now we have a Shape Builder as well as Inkscape users. So let's have a look at what this tool can do. On my canvas here, I have an array of circles that vary in size and color, and I've brought their opacity down in half so you can see exactly where they line up with each other. Now the benefit of the Shape Builder tool is that it allows you to create new shapes based on the intersecting area of other shapes. So if I select all of these objects here, I can come over here to the toolbar where the Shape Builder tool is now located, or the new keyboard shortcut for it, which is the letter X, and I can click on it. And now it takes us into this isolated environment here. And if you look over here in the tool settings, we have two different things that we can do here. We can add or we can subtract. So I'm gonna choose subtract and I'm gonna click and drag through this area right here to subtract those shapes from the design. And now that has been removed. And I'll come over here and I'll click on this shape as well to remove that. And now if I wanna add shapes together, I can come over here and select the add setting. And now I can click and drag through these areas and combine them together into a single shape. Now this is where Inkscape's Shape Builder is a little different from other applications. If you notice here, this object here is highlighted in blue. If you wanna keep these other gray objects as well, you're gonna to have to turn them blue as well. So click on them to make them blue, and this will let Inkscape know that this is the remaining shapes that you would like to keep. Now if you look over here, this object is separate from this object. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna combine them together by clicking and dragging, and now that's one shape as you can see there. I'll combine these together as well. And once you're finished, you can come over here and click on this checkbox. And as you can see there, the changes have been applied. Just like that, we were able to create a new shape based on the intersecting area of those other shapes, which is a process that would have taken a long sequence of path operations previously. So that's a really cool new addition to Inkscape that I'm really excited about. Another new feature that I'm really excited about is the ability to round the corners of objects directly within the nodes tool. A couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a tutorial demonstrating how to round the corners of objects by using path effects, but this new upgrade allows us to bypass the path effects menu altogether. So to show you what I mean, I have this object here. I'm going to click on it to select it, and I'm going to come over here to my Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And in the Tool Settings menu, you will see we now have this new option. If you hover your cursor over it, it says Add Corners LPE. And if I click on that button, It'll give us these round handles that you can click and drag to round the corner of whatever node it's associated with. And if you want to round the corners of multiple nodes, all you have to do is click and drag over them to select them, and you can use these handles to round all of the corners as you can see there. Now, if at any point you want to remove the roundedness from the corners, all you have to do is click on this button again, and it'll revert back to its previous state. One of the major changes that was brought about in version 1.3 of Inkscape is the ability to work with patterns, which has received a complete overhaul. So to show you what I mean, I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle. And instead of filling this rectangle with a color or a gradient, I'm going to fill it with a pattern instead. I'm gonna come over to my fill and stroke menu. I'm gonna click on the fill tab, and I'm gonna click on this button right here that says pattern when you hover your cursor over it. And right away, you can already see how apparent the changes are. First of all, we have a lot more patterns to choose from and work with. And we also have this drop down up here that when you click on it, it gives us all of these different categories of patterns to work with. So I'm going to choose nature patterns right here. And as you can see, we have all of these different nature themed patterns to choose from. I'm going to choose this one right here for this demonstration. 
And if you come down here towards the bottom of the menu, you can see we now have this pattern editor, which allows us to make various types of changes to our pattern. We can use the scale X and scale Y to increase and decrease the size of the pattern. We can use the orientation to rotate the pattern. This slider right here also allows you to rotate the pattern. And then we also have the offset X and Y, which allows you to move the pattern relative to its position on the canvas. And then over here we have gap X and gap Y, which allows you to change the spacing between the pattern tiles. And then over here we have the color bar. If we click on this little color bar, we can change the color of our pattern. So I have leaves on my canvas. So I'm gonna change this to uh, a color that's more fitting for leaves. There we go. And then finally, we have this button over here that says edit on canvas. If I click on that button, we will get handles on our screen that we can use to make all of these transformations directly on the canvas instead of working with this menu here. So let me zoom out. It looks like these handles are a little big here. I'm gonna take this handle in the bottom right corner and scale it down like this. And you can, as you can see, I'm able to scale down the pattern. Now, if I hold the control key, it locks the aspect ratio so that everything scales proportionately. And then if we use this node up here in the top left corner, this allows us to change the position of the pattern relative to the object. And then finally, we have this option right here, this little round knot, which allows us to rotate the pattern as you can see there. Another new feature that I thought was really interesting and worth mentioning is the ability to transform Gaussian blurs once they're applied. So to show you what I mean here, I have this text item on my screen. I'm gonna right click this and go to duplicate and I'll make this duplicate copy white, and then I will select the original black copy beneath it. And now I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur the same way I normally would by coming over here to the fill and stroke menu and using this blur slider down here. Now previously, all you could do in Inkscape was increase or decrease the size of the blur, but now we have additional transformations that we can make. If you come over here to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, we now have these handles on the top and right hand side. The handle up top allows you to distort the blur vertically, and the handle on the side allows you to distort it horizontally as you can see there. So I'll take this handle and bring this all the way down, and I'll adjust this handle like that, and as you can see here, we have this very simple motion blur effect that we were easily able to create by adjusting our Gaussian blur. The final update we'll be looking at for this video is the path effects menu, which has been revamped and simplified. So to show you what I mean, if I click on my object here, I can open the path effects menu by going to path and selecting path effects. And the way this menu worked previously was that there was a little plus icon over here in the bottom left corner, and you could click on that to add a new path effect. And when you do that, you get this menu that populates that allows you to choose your path effect. All of that is gone now though. If you notice here, we now just have a simple menu. And if you wanna add a new path effect, you could just click on this little arrow icon right here to pull down this drop down menu. And there are all of our path effects. Now, if you're looking for a specific path effect, you can just use this search bar right here. For example, if I wanted to apply a perspective path effect, I could just type in P-E-R-S, and there it is right there, perspective envelope, and I can add that. And just like that, the path effect has been added. Now, if I come over here to the path effect label, I can click this arrow icon right here to collapse the menu, and now I can add more path effects if I want to. So let's say I wanted to add another path effect. I'll grab my menu right here and I will add a bend path effect. And now we have all of our bend controls in there like that. And then I can simplify this menu and then add another path effect. For example, I'll use bounding box. And then we can minify that menu as well. And you can see here, we have all of our path effects indexed in this menu. You can turn off their visibility or you can just delete them altogether like that, as you can see there. So that should do it for today's video. As I mentioned earlier, these are just some of the major changes that were introduced in version 1.3. For a full list of all of the changes, be sure to check out the release notes that I link below. And if you're enrolled in my Inkscape Masterclass, then there will be new lessons added for all of these tools and features by the time you see this video. I also re-recorded all of the lessons earlier this year, so everything is up to date. And I've also added quizzes and tutorial exercises to practice what you've learned. If you're not enrolled, then consider checking it out. 
I'm in there every morning answering your questions and helping you guys out in any way that I can. I'll have some info linked about that below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.